Today, I would like us to explore the concept of webhooks. And I've just done a quick Google search here about what are webhooks, and I have two, uh, two articles here, two amazing articles that you can look at. Uh, because I think it's very important for any software engineer to understand what are webhooks uh, before even we can look at this. So we are going to be looking at uh, how webhooks work in ERP Next and the Frappe framework today. And then in the future date, I'm also going to be showing you, uh, or probably even today, I'm going to be showing you also how to receive webhooks inside of ERP Next. So a webhook basically is, is a, an HTTP request that is used to send data from one application to another. So in our case here, imagine, uh, assume that you have another application uh, that is independent of ERP Next. And you like that every time there is some transaction inside of your ERP Next instance, you like some data to be sent to that application. For example, let's say we are in our article library document here, and we would like that my server is not running. Let me just start my server quickly. And I may have to increase this font so that you can see what I'm doing here. So let's say that, um, let me first of all get to my ERP next user. I miss the password. That must be it. So I've installed my app there. And then I can do bench start. And when, once my server is running here, I can now. Uh, let me try to reload first just to make sure it's running and what I'm trying to explain here is assuming that I would like every time I update my article like for instance here if when I update this article I want this application to send some some data or the, some of this data to another application maybe it is uh, being used to manage uh, something about these articles so maybe the availability or something like that so I would like every time there is an, a change here to send this data to that other application, all right? That is what we are going to be seeing today. This also uh, used a lot in banking systems where you need to uh, notify another application of a transaction inside of your bank. So how we do this, uh, my server is running here. Just go to the awesome bar at the top and look for web hooks. You see web hook list? open it and here I don't have any web hook as of now so I'll go ahead and create a new web hook and what we are doing here is the naming series you can select uh, if you have multiple this is the default for ERP next if you have another one that you have created a custom one you can select and then here is an event the, here you select the event uh, at which the event is going to trigger so you have a number of events here you can look at them but I would like this to happen on update, okay? If you're not familiar with uh, ERP Next of Rapper events, please go ahead and first of all look at uh, these events and see what each of them means so that you know where uh, to uh, how to place your webhook properly, all right? I would like to put mine on update because I don't want to be to spend time uh, putting in new data here. I just want to edit uh, an article that exists and I want me, uh, to trigger uh, my hook all right then the next thing that you're going to be doing here is to select the doc type uh, that you want to be the one where the event is triggered and I want this to be article uh, article library article library doc type here is my doc type and this enabled button here make sure that it is checked if you want to be able to trigger this event otherwise if you leave it unchecked the event is not going to be active and therefore even when the update is performed on this document the hook is not going to trigger so leave that uh, active and then here we have a section for conditions all right on the right side you have examples of conditions and remember that you can access anything within this doc type and in our case here we are talking about the we are talking about the let me go to this one article library we are talking remember we are talking about the article library doc type so you are you have access to all these fields inside of this part here just by doing doc dot uh, whatever field name that you want to call so let's say for instance we want to call this document only the time when the article cost is beyond like twenty thousand you can just come here and do uh, doc dot uh, doc dot article cost is above twenty thousand here and that will trigger only when that condition is met so this part is for uh, is for putting in your 
conditions. The next thing here is the webhook request uh, URL and then the structure. These are two very important things because this is what determines what kind of data is sent and where it is sent. Now, I had already done a Django application, uh, which I'm going to use in this example to show you how we can receive this data. So uh, if I open my, I can open Sublime Text here, uh, new window. Sorry, I opened a new file, let me do a new window. And here I can browse my files. So I'll go to open folder and I'll go to my desktop, builds, Django, and I have built one here, webhooks, okay? Open it, this one I built for the purpose of this tutorial only. And then I just uh, created my, uh, my the Django app and called it webhooks. And then I have one app that I have created called uh, get data. Inside get data, I have this view that I have created and this is the content of this view. So I have a function here that I am calling get data from ERP. And then inside of these webhooks, I have a URLs, uh, urls.py file where I have created a path called data. And this is referring to views.getData from ERP. And if you look at views, you see I'm getting uh, them from the get data app. I'm importing views. And then I'm accessing the get data .erp next function that is inside of these views. So it is basically this one, all right? And then I'm doing a number of things here, like I am I I am um, I am getting the data that is coming in from ERP next, and then I'm co I'm, co I'm, com I'm converting that into a dictionary because uh, initially it comes as a query set, and then I try to access this data. You are going to see what is going to be printed uh, in in just a few minutes, all right? So this is what I'm going to my data uh, Django application. And therefore I want to access this app uh, inside of my Django app. So I'll go back to my terminal and I'll split this. I can split this because I'm using Terminator. And then here I'm going to navigate, again, let me make this slightly larger. And then I'm going to my navigate to my desktop and then I'll go to builds and then I'll go to Django, Django. And looking at this, I have webhooks and then I, I, I can go to webhooks and inside here now I can do python manage.py and run server. Remember what I'm doing here is that I, I want to run the Django server and it is running. It is running at port uh, 8000, 8000. So if I hold shift, uh, I mean control and click on this link, it's going to try and open my Django app. But the reason why you are seeing this error is because if you look at my views properly here, I'd, uh, I mean my URLs, uh, uh, I don't have any path that is going to a slash, that is to the root of this. So if I need to access, for instance, my data part here, I need to append the data at the end. And what we see here is that this URL is returning data received. This is just, uh, this is just um, an HTTP response that you see I have returned here. So this is just returning data received and therefore we are hitting this particular uh, uh, function with that, okay? So now what I would like us to uh, to go uh, to do is to put this this function as the function that they will be receiving our that will be receiving that 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 we want uh, data to be sent to by our webhook from ERP next, all right? And then here you are going to select whether you want to send your data in a URL encoded form or in JSON form. If you select URL encoded what you're going to have here at the bottom is this form where or table where you are supposed now to add the data that you want to send. Otherwise, if you selected JSON, at the bottom here you have a JSON a text input where you can now come in and put in your JSON, of course. Huh? All right. But to keep things simple, let us just go with uh, URL encoded form. And we come down here, you can leave that to that. And then when we come down here, we just add. When you do that, you realize that these fields are the fields that are inside of the doc type that you selected up here. So the doc type you select here, you find that it is what uh, is the, the fields that uh, are shown here belong to that doc type. So I can decide I want to return the name and I also want to return maybe the article name. So you select what you want to be sent to the other application. Then I would like to return the other 
you select basically everything that you think is important to the other application okay isbn and maybe i can get the status all right then i click on save and i have my web webhook ready so every time my uh my article the this article here is updated remember we put on update then i'm going to send this data to the django application that is running on this port okay i can close that this django application and therefore we expect that at least you see this one is telling us not found it's not did, did not find the slash and it gave us the 404 error of course 404 is about not found and then when we put the data one we are getting a 200 this is a success okay now we are expecting that when we send or when we update our when we update our our article library and save we expect that some data is going to be sent here okay so let's see what we have here and before even we go here i would like us to to first of all print even before i do this let me first of all print what is coming up here okay so i want you to see this step by step so this data is just request.post so i'm receiving that data and then i'm trying to put it to put it there my uh my db settings has an issue so bear with me let me just clear this and then i run the, my server again and then i come back to my application i can just change this and then save and i'm expecting to see some data here and yes you can see here i have a query set with the name think and grow rich article this so this data has come <coughs> excuse me this data has come from our erp next instance now look at this keenly this is returning a, a query dictionary okay so how about when we want to maybe uh, make this data more accessible what you are going to do this is this is what i was doing here i can now remove this and i convert that uh, now let me let me first of all print this for you so that you see what we have so i'm again going to print my dict here okay the variable names don't worry about the variable names so clear this again run my server my server is running and then i come back to my article and i change something and i save and look at this now this one does not have a query dictionary it looks like this this is this is what we have all right <coughs> and then after that the next thing we are going to do now is to change instead of printing that we are going to loop over what we have there and try to get more de re de uh, refined data so here we are printing uh, we, we have item in my dictionary there and then we are saying uh, load that as um, as a json and then print the json data here so let's see what we have now clear this and run my server again when i run my server again i come to my article i edit it save it check what we have here we have this cleaned data here so we have the name that one we have that so this is json data now so when we have this now we are able to access each and every item easily and if we need to maybe store it in the database we can store it very easily so we can come here and maybe grab something like article name from here copy and then we come back to our app we put it here so that is what we are printing and now we can come back here and clear and run our server again and when we come here and change something and save it we are only going to get think and grow rich there so you can now access these items one by one from your dictionary here and do with them whatever you want to do with them so that is how we handle uh webhooks from erp next to other applications next video i am going to show you how to hand to handle uh, webhooks from other applications to your erp next instance and this one we are going to create a python script that is that we are going to use as the other application so we are going to do a python script from scratch and then we are going to put in our code and that we are going to point that uh, that app to our erp next instance and we are going to send some data from our python script to erp next instance thank you so much and see you in that amazing video